Hi, Mark and Steve. I just wanted to tell you, especially Mark, that you have inspired me to try growing things. I always thought I was a plant killer, but I seem to be doing okay. I found this little pea plant on somebody's lawn and it was free, so I planted it and it's now growing beautifully up the little string structure that I made for it. And then in this bucket down here are two cucumber plants that were also sitting on somebody's wall and were for free. And they seem to be thriving in my little bucket. And over in this window, I have some carrots in a tall container so the little carrots can grow down into it. And right next to it are these three little beet plants that I hope will survive. I want to take another bucket and grow some potatoes, but that's for the future. Thanks, Mark. You make me feel encouraged. Hey guys, welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark and we are on Smokey Steve and Mark. Oh yes we are, yes we are. How you doing? It's so nice to see you. Ah, we have a fun episode tonight. It's totally magnetic tonight on Mondays with Mark. It is, it is. Okay, I guess you can tell I'm excited. I am. But first, hey, special thanks to Kate for that that intro, you know, I just love when people send me um, pictures and videos of uh, projects that I may have inspired them to do, or um, I don't know, or or different things that they've tried themselves. I just love it, and uh, that video was so very nice. And and rest assured. There will be more gardening videos coming very soon. The garden's growing like mad. So, uh, I don't know. I think we may get out there this week and do something. So, anyway, I asked how you were doing, but I didn't let you answer. How are you doing? How was your Monday, first day of the week? I always say, Monday, it's a perfect opportunity to say, hey, it's the beginning of the week. I'm going to have a great week, right? You know me, always trying to be positive, right? <laughs> I know, sometimes it's harder than others, but anyway. Uh, so, I did say that today was all about magnets, and why? Why not? Magnets are super cool, I think. Anyway, so, uh, for for the we're going to do a ton of projects, okay? And we're going to, like, speed through them, and um, let's see here. Wait, let me get everything ready here, because i got to show you a couple things. So, the magnets we're going to use today, there's all different kinds of magnets, and I'll tell you, you know, a little bit about magnets in a second. But the magnets we're going to use today, we're going to use button magnets mostly, and we're going to use sheet magnets, too. And you can get both of these at the dollar store. So, Anyway, so like what are magnets? Magnets actually, believe it or not, scientists and um, uh, other people are, they, they, they still, magnets are still a mystery uh, in some cases. Uh, what they do know about magnets are this. All magnets have a north and south pole, right? I mean, just like the earth. I mean, really the earth is one huge magnet. I mean, that's how a compass works, you know, that's how the pointer goes, right? Um, magnets are ancient. They're very, very, very old, believe it or not, too. In fact, ancient mariners used to use lodestones to help them with navigation. Lodestones are a, a natural material that, that have magnetic qualities to it. And a lot of magnets uh, that we use today come from that, too. So, I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. I was doing some research on, like, what magnets were and everything, and without getting into, like, the scientific explanation of how they work, I just came up with a few kind of interesting facts about it, you know. But um, some materials, like iron, can also be magnetized. Um, and this process is called magnetization. Now, I never did this experiment before, and Steve did. He was like, oh, I did that one as a kid. I remember, I remember. Um, but some some uh, materials, and they're called uh, ferromagnetic materials, that's what they're called, such as iron, can be magnetized. So, do this fun little trick. Take a screwdriver and a regular bar magnet, rub it, all over it several times. Just get that going there. And the magnetic energy transfers to the screwdriver. And 
I to that I totally was blown away by that. Everyone, I, if everyone else knew this before me, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna feel really stupid. I did not know that could happen. I had no idea. I I don't know, but anyway, uh, it's called magnetiz magnetization. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Do that with your kids; they might think that's interesting. I don't know. I just had to share that with you. All right, but anyway, so and 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 a little safety. If you're gonna do some of these projects, you definitely want to keep magnets away from certain things. Obviously, pacemakers. If anyone has a pacemaker, I'm sure your doctor told you. You know, keep magnets away, right? Also, your cell phone, it will destroy your cell phone. Any hard drives in a computer, um, I would just keep it away from the computer completely, but it will erase everything. Your TVs, I didn't realize that as well. Not that I like, you know, take magnets to the TV all the time, but I didn't realize that you actually should keep it away from TVs. Credit cards, definitely keep magnets away from credit cards. I've ruined, I don't know how many credit cards with, I had a magnetic business card that I kept in my wallet and I was wondering why my credit cards weren't working over and over again. It was because of the magnet. Sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's the blonde dye sinking in or something. I don't know. I don't get it, but I didn't know that. So anyway, that was just a few little interesting um, tidbits about magnets. Um, so why don't we get started? I have a series of projects here that are uh, pretty fun, very easy, and um, I think most of them will be great to do with the kiddos too, but um, certainly suitable for adults. So I have the camera set up in a different angle so I can maybe angle it down so you can see what I'm doing instead of trying to hold it up all the time for you. So let's get to, all right, our first project here. Let me move my little clipboard over so I don't forget anything. Like I said, we're gonna use button magnets, and magnets come in many different strengths, and we'll get into that later because you'll need different strengths for different projects, but it's very, very easy to use these button magnets because you can make a magnet stronger. Now, when you take two magnets and put them together like that, you're going to get almost twice the amount of strength in that magnet. Not quite twice the amount, but almost twice. Um, and I tried to research why it wasn't literally twice and there was no answer. So maybe I'll have to continue, continue doing that. So for our first project today, we are going to use popsicle sticks. Yes, we're using popsicle sticks and we're going to make a really cute photo frame. Okay. So really, really quick. Let me get my stuff out here. Now I got these now, um, you can, one, get your popsicle sticks by eating popsicles, but you'll probably have to eat a lot of popsicles. Now, hey, if that's your thing, go for it. I got this package at the dollar store. And you can also get them already colored at the dollar store, too, or you can paint them yourself, too. In addition to that, we're going to need little mini clothespins. I have two different sizes here that we're going to use, this one and that one. And we'll need some tacky glue. And of course, we're going to need magnets as well. So let's use plain ones today. How about that? Ah, let's use the colored ones because they're out already. All right, so let's get these out here and watch. Here we go. Bring it down. <laughs> See? Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do is line up our popsicle sticks. All right. We're going to start, this is a very easy one that we're starting with, okay? All right, so you're going to line it up, and you can make it as large or as small as you want, depending on what type of photo you want to hang on it. Let's see, I'll put about, let's see, we'll do about this many, just for sake of showing. That looks good, right? Okay, so then you're going to take two more popsicle sticks, and we're going to take our tacky glue, and we're going to... Um, add glue to the back of each of two sticks and we're going to lay it on either side like that and like that. This reminds me of elementary school doing popsicle stick crafts which I always enjoyed doing. I did. Okay, 
But who says you have to be in elementary school to do this, right? Not me. Now we're going to take our button magnets. And I used four for these. And we're just going to attach our magnets like so. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right, and give them a press down. And before the glue dries, you want to make sure that they're straight. Just like so. Okay. And we are just going to let that dry. Now, tacky glue dries fairly quickly, um, but I would at least give it an hour, maybe even two hours, okay? So let me bring you back up. I don't know. I think I'm kind of digging that up and down thing. I don't know. What do you think? Is it distracting or not? So you're probably thinking, I cannot believe we are making popsicle stick crafts. This is just the beginning. We're just doing something simple to start with. And I said this would be good for the kiddos, right? All right. So the next step, uh, these were made with regular ones. And all I did was I glued a mini clothespin, which I also got at the dollar store, right to the top of it like that which allows us to put a photo. Now this is a nice cute little saying, like so. You can put a photo or a saying, like this one is, uh, this one I put on here. This was Steven when he was a priest for Halloween. <laughs> here we go, like that. So, and look, I have a handy dandy little, um, let me just, let's see, see if I can do this. And there you go. I think that'd be great on the fridge. I really do. So, all right. That was our first project. See? Super simple, super easy, right? <laughs> okay. So, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Our next project, if you remember, I did a bunch of concrete projects. And one of the things that I do when I make concrete projects is I always have uh, silicone or candy molds. I have it set aside so that if I have extra concrete, I can use it up by pouring it into the molds. And they come out, you know, like this. That's a seashell. And we have a little anchor and a skull. So, obviously, they make perfect, perfect magnets. They're, I just painted them. There's the anchor. Super spooky skull. Whoa. And I used, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I used a um, glittery paint on the seashell. And they make wonderful fridge magnets. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and the only thing you need for that is some quick set cement and a silicone mold of your choice. And uh, like this is the little kitty. I'm going to paint him black and make him into a magnet. And let's see, we have a heart. Obviously, I'll paint him red. And then if you get some paint pens, you can put some little details on it like I did with the anchor here. I just added a little detail to that. So anyway, if you want to know how to do that, check out my concrete video because... Um, that's how I made these. Let's put this aside now. All right, so what are we moving on to next? Oh, here's another super simple one. I dig this. If you're like me, I love, love, love um, vintage tins. You can find these at like, um, like Goodwill or Salvao, or you can even order them online now too. Um, I've even found that they have a line of them at the dollar store, but they don't have them all the time. Every time I see it, I try to grab one, but this is an authentic vintage tin. And these make apps excellent, excellent pencil holders, right? Like that. But all you have to do is take some glue, and glue a few magnets to the back of them. And then you have one that sticks right on the fridge or anywhere inside a locker, anywhere. So there you go. 
vintage tin pencil holders. Now, I thought we could take that one step further, and if you had a little bit larger of a tin and use a little stronger of a magnet, it could be a utensil holder too. Save some space in the kitchen. Put it right on the fridge there, all right? So, anyway, that's the tin. So, where's my list? Where are we at? Four. Oh, this is a fun one. Oh my gosh. So, washi tape, washi tape, washi tape. Okay, so washi tape is still like the thing right now, right? Everybody loves using it for everything. I have a bunch of it. This is super easy and so fun to do. All you need is the flexible um, magnets like this. Now you can buy the sheets of these at the dollar store or the craft store. They also sell them in rolls too. And Wait do you see? This is so easy. So all we're going to do, and I won't, I won't turn down the camera to do this. So all we're going to do is take our washi tape, stick it right on there. Here, I'll show you. Let me cut it and I'll show you. It's super easy. Okay. Stick it on there like that. Okay. Now we're just going to cut it all the way around. And hold it up here a second so you can see. There we go. Cut it. Cut it. And what I like about this, this is so versatile. You can use, I mean, you know how many different, like, um, uh, here we go, patterns, washi tape comes in. You can do any, any pattern that they have, anything. Okay, so now we have, like, a strip like this. Whoops, like this. And you're just going to cut it. You can cut it like in band-aid like lengths, you know, like that. You can make little squares, whatever you want, until you have them that look like that. And you're probably thinking, well, what the heck? What can you do about that? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you. Okay. Let me get my magnetic board here. So <laughs> now how cute is that for real and so simple and so inexpensive right i i think so anyway all right moving right along moving right along i don't know you know in our, you know our attempts to keep our videos short here i don't know we'll see okay so what are we on why should take five okay this is a fun one this is so fun okay so we are going to make do you ever wonder what to do like if you own a kitty you know what i'm talking about canned cat food you end up with so many empty cans now we recycle them and everything but it's always on my mind what can i make with these cans we're going to make mini tin can terrariums out of cat food cans oh yes okay so let's do this real quick all right, so for this project, you'll need a cat food can, okay? Just like that. Now, I want to show you the difference. Now, this is a tuna fish can, and this is a catfish can. Now, you can use a tuna fish can. Just try to get the ones that have the removable lid, in, you know, instead of the ones that you need to use a can opener with, because what we want is this little lip inside there, because that is very important for this project, okay? So... I just wanted to show you the difference there, okay? So I'm going to bring you back down again so I can show you how to make this, all right? Here we go. Like, did you like the sound effects? Okay. All right, so now we have our tin can, right? So first thing I did with my cans was I painted it. I did this one blue. I did that one white, I painted one black, you can spray paint it or use acrylic paints, whichever, you know, whichever way you want to do it is fine. All right, so we have that. Now, we're going to put that there. Now, we are going to make a the terrarium part of it. So you will need clear um, acetate or some type of clear plastic like this. Now, you can purchase this at um, any craft store, but here's a little tip for you. I just bought a dollar photo frame at the dollar store that had this as the glass instead of glass, if you know what I mean. Sometimes those cheap frames have these plastic sheets in it. 
that's what you want for this project and it's only a buck okay all right so the easiest way to do this is we're going to take our cam and we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to trace around the can all right just like so with a black marker okay okay and now turn it over and put that right on top of it and as you can see I'm going to need to cut in about an eighth of an inch for it to sit inside the lip of the tin so simply cut it and you don't have to be perfect doing this because it's all going to be hidden and I'll show you that in a minute the first time you cut it it probably you know you might have to trim it a little bit, and I'm trying to do it so fast right now. Oh, where do you see my cutting job here? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Alright, so, now let's see how bad I did. Alright. Yep, yeah, see? I need to trim it just a little bit more because I did it too fast. So we're going to take just about, I don't know, maybe another eighth of an inch off of it. go and you guys get to see the unedited version of this too all right perfect so now we have that and it fits inside there what we're doing is we're making the terrarium part on there so what we're going to do is take this and we're going to cut it right in half just like that and then kind of fit it in there and, okay and see if it fits If you know how hard this is, do you know how hard this is to do with this light shining in my face? Okay, anyway. All right, so it fits in like so. So what we're going to do is glue that in. And I told you that the edges really didn't matter too much because we're going to be covering it with string, uh, some jute string. Let me get it for you. Some jute like that. Um, here, here it is here. Okay. So. To do this, all we're going to do is we're going to line the in the entire inside. Whoops, I'm doing the wrong one. Here we use the we use the painted one here. All right, so we're going to do the inside. We're just going to line it. You can use uh, as much glue as you'd like here. Again, it's not important. This glue dries completely clear. All right, and now we're going to set our little piece of plastic inside like so. I gotta do it upright because I can't see. Blind as a bat. Blind as a bat. Okay, so it's glued like that. Next, we are going to put a little more glue over the top of just the bottom part where we put the plastic. Like that. Okay, so now we're going to take our jute like this. And you could use yarn or twine or anything else you'd like. And we're going to line the inside of it simply by placing it in like this and running it all the way around. Now, I've found the easiest way to do this is to measure it and cut it first. But you can be a rebel if you want to just take it straight from the roll and then cut it once you uh, get to the end. There we go. Just like so. So you have it framed in. There's the camera like that okay now we're going to set this aside and let it dry all right and with the magic of tv i happen to have one finished there we go so this is already dry okay it's all ready to go dry this is the white one all right so next we're going to um glue the um magnets to the back these are a little bit more heavy so what i did was i put five on now you're going to want to put glue on there i'm not doing it for the for demonstration but i glued five button magnets to the back and it worked perfectly whoops just like ah <laughs> <laughs> look how cool that is <laughs> anyway uh i glued five of them like so all right so anyway that's done after that is dry now we have something to work with so 
Now what you'll need is some type of gravel. I got this at the dollar store. They come in every different color. You can feel free to mix the colors. You could use sand, gravel, whatever you'd like. Now, I just started upright like this, and I poured it in. And then we're going to, here, I'll do it this way so you can see it. I'm going to turn it up. Okay, so I need a little more. More in there. Like so. Okay. All right, and now, now, the fun part. Okay, now we get to decorate it. So, I got my little container of goodies out, and I found some. These succulents are at the dollar store. You can take that right out and use one of those. Um, succulents are all the rage, so I got a bunch of succulents to use. Um, you can use fake, fake greenery like this simply by ripping them apart. That would work. And then I have some moss and some accents like these little these these balls are really cute they sell these in a package at the dollar store you get four of these for a dollar and then i have some stones whatever you want to use this is the creative and fun part of it so let's see why don't we use let's use a succulent for this one okay so now we're going to take a little bit of glue i don't know let's use this one so we're going to use that one and we're going to put some glue on the bottom of him like so, okay? And kind of tilt it to the side, get all the rocks to one side, place them where you want them. I think he'll look good there. And then lightly tap the rocks back into place, and then you have your greenery in there. Look, doesn't he look cute? <laughs> okay, so next you can add anything you want. Let's see, why don't we throw a little ball in there? I think that might be a little too big, but I don't know. I put a little ball in there. What do you think? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, is that you can be very creative. We could throw a rock in there or whatever. So, let and then once you do that, let it dry. Now, let me bring you back up and I'll show you the finished product. And we're back. Okay. And this is the one I made earlier, the finished one. As you can see, I put some moss in there and a little plant. You know what I think would look fantastic in here? Air plants. Perfect for this type of project. So I think the only thing I need, let's throw a, I think I'll throw a little rock in there. There we go. Give them a little more. Isn't it cute? Another thing I think this would be really nice for are wedding favors. I could see a bunch of these sitting at everybody's table, something that they can take home with them. I think it would be very, very nice. Use different colored gravel in there, different types of moss. If you wanted to, you could even use some ribbon and decorate the side of it too, if you'd like. I just kept mine real simple. This I painted black, and uh, I just put two things in there to keep it real simple. So um, as we finish these projects, I will um, take you over later into the kitchen, and we'll see how they all look, okay? So that was our terrarium made out of a cat food can. <laughs> you could also use raffia, too. I just didn't do it with this one, but raffia would look nice on that, too. So, anyway, moving right along, where are we at here? Okay, this is, oh, this one is, this one's genius. All right, so, you know how you have lamps in your house, and you have lamp shades on there, and if you're like me, I like to kind of switch things up for the decor for the seasons, right? Now, lamp shades, I don't know, you could throw fabric over it, you could do something with it, but... This is a quick, simple way that you can change your decor for any season. So, I got these. I think these are sun, these sunflowers. They're fake. Got them at the dollar store. We're going to remove the head from them. All right. And then we're going to clip, clip this little um, stem off of it. Okay. Like that. And then we're going to use two magnets. Okay. And we're going to put a little bit of glue, like that. And we're going to use both magnets, put it on there, press it down, set it aside, and let it dry. So now we have this 
with our magnets on the back and they separate, okay? So now we can put them on our lampshade, okay? So I told you I was gonna show you how all this stuff works and I have two more quick little things to show you. So let me go grab Steve so I can have him um, play cameraman for a second, okay? All right, give me one second. Okay, so we just finished our flowers, right? With the two magnets that come apart. And the simple as this, you just put one side on there, put the other side on the back, and voila. Look! Kind of nice, huh? And it makes it super easy to change for the seasons. Oh my gosh, it's so... I, I, this is brilliant. I just love it. All right, let's go to the kitchen and see the finished products. Okay. Here we go. All right, so we have our popsicle stick photo frames. There. You used that picture of me? I did. I see. Who's that young, handsome guy? The How priest. Low? How low would be that? Our washi tape. Magnetic tape. <laughs> Our vintage tin can pencil holder. Our magnetic little uh, concrete magnets. There. And then we have our tin can terrarium. And I have two more hacks for you. Okay, so these are like to save space in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Like we have very, very um, limited cabinet space. Okay, so like trying to find the aluminum foil and the Ziploc bags and the parchment paper, they're all just thrown in there and everything. Check this out. So you're gonna take your aluminum foil and you're gonna take either some button magnets or these strip magnets like this, glue it to the back of it there you go. Hmm. Brilliant. Of course, you probably want to put it on the side, right? Like that. Oh. But I think that is a brilliant idea that saves space. Okay, mm. so everyone loves my little um, recipe holder here, right? So I was thinking, how can we kind of mimic that? Now, I, of course, I don't know how to make that thing with the thing up in there and all that. And I got this from... Um, a pampered chef party that I had years and years and years ago. I can't even find them anymore. So, do this. Get yourself some of the sheet magnets like this and a regular ruler mm -hmm. and glue it to the back. And look at how cool that looks. You have that up there and you can just pin your recipe there. Oh, I see. Isn't it brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed our Magnetic Mondays with Mark. Thank you so, so much for watching. I had a blast today. I hope you did too, and I hope you try one, two, or all of these, you know. Like I said, I'm probably going to make a part two because when trying to figure out, like, what to do for this video, there was a lot more that we could have done, so... I don't know. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to do that. So thank you so, so much for watching. As always, it was a fantastic time spending time with you. Please like, subscribe, and comment. If you have any questions on any of this, shoot me an email. All of our contact information is below. I'll post this all on Facebook. Check us out there, Smokey Steve Space and Mark. Send us a friend request. We're also on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. And remember, everybody, please stay safe. Stay well, but above all else, stay positive, okay? I'll see you next time. Ciao, everybody. Mwah.